Hello, this is Eric of Not Bios Tech and Reviews slash Studio. And on the Studio channel, I do mostly microphone and studio equipment reviews. And on this channel, I do the tech stuff. Now, this particular motherboard is the MSI MPG B550i Edge Wi-Fi. Now, this is replacing my previous motherboard, which was almost the same. It was the MSI MPG B550i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, the M.2 cooler. Yes, we're going to actually hear, unlike most people say, well, I'll check that, and they don't. We're doing that in this build, and we are also check out the cooler from AMD that's included with my particular CPU. Now, let's get started. The motherboard came on top of this box, and inside that box, we have a regular... Hmm, looks like an RGB cable. Interesting. We have the Wi-Fi antennas right here. We have our serial ATA connections, two different ports. One is angled and one is straight and two different straight ones. We also have some, I guess, stickers, labels, insulation guide, and regulatory notices. Now let's get to the motherboard. On the motherboard itself, we have a cooler for our M.2. I'm not gonna actually use this. You don't need it installed. You can remove it, but I can connect it to my motherboard to hear how this sounds. So we'll do that shortly in a bit. Now, one thing that separates the B650 versus the other boards is that this has pins on it rather than the pins on the CPU. Let's check this out. There we can see our pins on our motherboard, very densely packed. I'll leave this closed for now because we're not gonna look at that at the moment. I'm gonna get the CPU installed eventually, but for now, let's look over this. Here is our power to the motherboard. Our CPU power is right here. And as we may know, we have our RAM slots, our memory slots. This one uses DDR5 rather than DDR4. We have our serial ATA ports right here for our regular spinning hard drives or for a serial ATA solid state drive. We have our type C USB right here. That's on the motherboard header, normally to your case. And then we have our regular, looks like a 3.0 USB connection right here. Our PCI Express, nice shielded, reinforced. And of course we have our little tab here for making it easy to remove or holding in your graphics card. For what else we see is we see a nice little tilt here to make it so your CPU cooler can install fairly simple. And it's a nice little layout. Now under here we have of course that M.2 slot, but we also have another one at the back just like the B550. So this is almost identical in a sense, but just updated. And the B550 had the cell underneath the heatsink, and this one is placed in a more reasonable spot. And I like that because if you need to unplug the battery, it is actually accessible. Now, one thing we have is a BIOS flash button never go without a flash button if you can get the flash button every time clear cmos button really nice to have of course i'm sure i'm going to press it many times over rather than the flash button be there way when you flash your bios you should reset your cmos here we have internal hdmi this is not normally what you're going to use unless you're using the built-in graphics on your cpu here we have two usb five gigabits per second port. There's no USB 2.0 old fashioned 480 megabits per second. That's ridiculously slow. This is more modern. Then we have our 10 gigabits port right here. And we have our 20, 20 gigabit slot right here. Another 10 and a 2.5 gigabit slot here for a uh, Ethernet, so that's nice to have. We also have Wi-Fi 6E, 
And we have a mic in port, a mic out port. And this looks like it's a line in, which is a two speakers left right channel. Now one thing that this is missing is optical. So some may not like that. The heatsink here is very nice. It's actually covering all our chokes right here. So power distribution is all covered right here. It's a little bit off the edge right here, but we can see generally everything is covered nicely. So this motherboard is gonna cover you for most CPUs. It's not gonna be an extreme overclocker, but it's gonna run nicely with pretty much any modern day CPU. Now one thing that's really nice is this debug right here, easy debug. These LEDs light up depending on the issue you're having. So we've got the boot error. We got a VGA error. We got a DRAM, that's your memory. And we got CPU error. So let's say if your old BIOS is not working with it, you might get a CPU error. Or if you bend the pins on your motherboard, which I generally don't like pins on a motherboard that way, but now modern CPUs have too many pins to deal with, so that's pretty much where the pins are gonna be from now on. Now to take this cooler off, I just have to remove these two screws. So let's do that. Let's take off our M.2 cooler. Sorry about this huge screwdriver, but uh, this one has a nice sharp tip and you kind of need a sharp tip in order to get this off. Now this attaches to the board right here. So we're gonna detach that. No, I'd recommend using something rather than pulling on the cable to take this off. But yeah, that's our cooler. And right under here, we got a thermal pad. So this is to actually help absorb the heat into this cooler. And this one looks more to be more of a heat spreader. There's no vents for the heat. So this is gonna spread the heat out. It's gonna stop your M.2 from getting as hot, but it's not gonna be some major cooler at all by any means. There's nowhere to vent out. We can't see any air vents at all. So that's nice little heat spreader. We also have a heat spreader right here for the underside of our M.2. And here we have our screw holes for two different sizes, M.2, depending on the size you are using. On the back side for M.2, we also have two different screw holes, but we can see this has those different lengths right there. And again, we have our two lengths right here to consider. I'm only gonna be able to run this for a little bit because I have no graphics card in here. The BIOS is not gonna like this, but we wanna hear this fan just as it starts up. I already know it's pretty quiet. So yeah, it's, it's not half bad of a fan noise but you can hear it. So that's what this little fan sounds like. For my particular build, I got these Rip Jaws memory sticks and these are only 5,600 megahertz and they are two sticks of 32 gigs, which means there's 64 gigs in total between the both of them. Cast latency 28, 34, 34 and 89 at 1.3 volts. And let's get this installed quickly just to see how this fits in here. And let's pull back our slot tabs if they're pulled forward. There we go. Make sure it's clicked in all the way. And next one. Can you believe how hard this is to actually install this on camera with the light above my head? Now I want to make sure this is in fully. There it is. Yes, it is. And there it is. Now our CPU, I have that as well. The CPU going this build is going to be the Ryzen 9 7900. And I got this for low power use. Despite the fact it's a little bit slower for gaming, that is absolutely at least fine with me because I do productivity work. And of course, 12 cores, 24 threads gives me a nice little future of this. And if I really want a little bit more speed, I can overclock it if I choose to. Precision boost, not a problem. This particular CPU actually comes with a cooler. We're not gonna be using this for my build. 
We are going to be using a Noctua cooler, but wow, that's big. I'm actually shocked. Such a big cooler for a 65 watt TDP CPU. I'm almost tempted to use it just because it's massive. I'm still missing some parts, so I can't get this done at this moment in time. Let's see if we get a nice view of this here. There we go. Unlike our 5000 series of CPU, we don't have pins, we just have the pads, just like the Intel CPUs have been for quite some time. And to install this, we're gonna have to lift this. I've never installed this series of CPU on motherboard yet. So this is going to be interesting. So when looking at this, I can see there's little tabs here. So we have to line up our CPU with the tabs. This is my first time ever installing on this particular motherboard. I like how simple AMD has made this. Make sure your CPU's in all the way. Wow. That is quite a bit of force. Now we got our motherboard ready. Now we just have to install everything else. And this should be very simple to install. I'm actually going to try out this cooler before I decide against using this. I might use this rather than my Noctua if it's quiet enough. I don't know that part. It's something to try. Now let me make one thing clear. This AMD CPU cooler fan is not that quiet. Not turning right now. Now it is. Even when it turns super slow, it makes quite a bit of motor noise. This might be acceptable to most people, but when your computer is extremely silent, like I mean, I have Noctua fans for my GPU. Can we see the spinning? Now I'm gonna stop this again, and my Noctua, my CPU cooler is Noctua as well. Do you hear the noise? My computer's right here. My microphone's right there. Silence. That's what you hear. Until I turn that on. So this is not going with my CPU, sadly. Nice chunk of metal. Nice looking cooler. In fact, let's just check that cooler out with the lights off. This is Eric of Not Bios. Don't forget to subscribe to Not Bios Tech and Reviews and help this channel grow. Soon enough, we'll be checking out the new computer case, which is actually right beside me right now. My case I'm using right now happens to be the Volt 3, which runs extremely hot. And I took out my dust filters on purpose because it runs so hot and I wanted more airflow. In fact, I don't even have a side panel here and everything is pretty much exposed to keep it nice and cool. But enough of that, we're going to get a case that's, well, we already have the case. We're going to be installing a case that actually has good airflow, and that makes a heck of a lot more sense. Thanks for watching, and have yourselves a most wonderful day.